Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, class of 2026. You know, it was only 12 years ago that I was sitting right where you're sitting tonight. And it's a little surreal for me to be here because it didn't seem that long ago. And looking at you, I can promise you that the months may seem long, but the years are short. And so cherish this moment that you have right now. You know, the white coat ceremony for me was an extremely meaningful event in my life. And so I want you to really understand what, what a testimony of God's faithfulness brought you here to this point tonight. And let me congratulate you because did you know that only 0.25% of the population will ever get the privilege to train to become a physician? So regardless of what happens going forward, it is an immense privilege for you to be here tonight setting off on this journey. And I want to really emphasize that. I also want to encourage you to never forget the excitement and the gratitude that you're filled with right now on this evening. Later on, as didactics draw on and as the stress of classes get underway, I want you to think back to this moment of how your journey started and recalibrate yourself on what the purpose for going through all of this actually is. And I'm sure that each of you has a testimony of how God has brought you here tonight. And the purpose of tonight's ceremony is to acknowledge his faithfulness in allowing you to don the white coat. So as you prepare to start this incredible journey that we all call medical training, I want to share with you three key points that have made the greatest difference for me during my years of training. These are things that I wish I was told early on in my training. And so I want to share them with you tonight and I hope that you will find something that you can take away as you begin this journey. Point number one, as you go through med school, perform for an audience of one. Perform for an audience of one. What do I mean by that? I remember when I applied for medical school, my only goal at that point was to become a doctor. And if people ask me what kind of doctor, I would tell them the kind that sees patients. <laughs> you see, I just wanted to get in. And I think a lot of you can empathize with that, being here. So it didn't really matter what kind of doctor I was, as long as I was the kind of doctor that was doing the Lord's will, because I felt called into medicine. And so to me, it was inconceivable that there could be such a thing as an unhappy medical student. Because regardless of what happens, you're in. You got into medical school. You're going to be a doctor. How could you as a med student be unhappy? <laughs> well, after I got accepted to med school and started training, things changed. <laughs> Suddenly, it wasn't enough that I was in med school and I remember the first time that I, I took an exam, my first exam in med school, and I got my score back. I didn't know what to think about it until I knew where everyone else stood in terms of their scores. Can you relate? If not, you will soon. <laughs> I needed to know what the curve was, and I realized that I started comparing myself to others a lot. I realized that my happiness depended on how I did compared to my classmates. When I saw other students receiving special awards or recognitions, I congratulated them, I applauded them, but really secretly on the inside, it burned me up that I wasn't getting the same recognition. I became dissatisfied with my level of achievement when I felt that others were achieving more than me. When it came time to choosing a specialty, I felt pressured and tempted to choose a more 
competitive specialty because of the prestige that came with it, even when it wasn't a specialty that really interested me or captivated me. So it suddenly seemed like over the course of medical school, my motivations for doing anything was based on a desire to do better than other people or to distinguish myself from the crowd. You see, my motivation prior to med school was simply to please God, to answer his call to become a physician. Then I went into med school at that juncture, wanting to only perform for an audience of one, my Heavenly Father. But after I got into med school, I started performing for other people. I started performing for an audience of many. The issue is that God set me to run my race alone, but no one else. The same way he's called you into medical school to run a specific race just for you against no one else. My issue in medical school was that I kept adding other people to this race. You see, friends, when you perform for the wrong audience, you will make decisions not based on your convictions or your calling, but on what brings you praise. I'm reminded of what was said in John chapter 12, verses 42 through 43. It says, nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, Christ, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Now hear this, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. You see, friends, the system will encourage you to perform for others, to constantly compare yourself to others, and to love the praise of men more than the praise of God. But you must fight this tendency as you go through medical school and your training beyond. Put the blinders on. Run the race that God has set for you and for no one else. Don't let other people's opinions of you determine your happiness. In all that you do, perform for the praise of your Lord and not for the praise of men. Perform for an audience of one. So point number one, perform for an audience of one. Point number two is focus on the journey more than the destination. You see, how you get through medical school is actually more important than getting through medical school. What do I mean by that? The spiritual foundation that you set in medical school will follow you for the rest of your life. Medical school can become all-consuming. It can make you one-dimensional. And when the going gets tough, there's a real danger of sacrificing everything on the altar of academics. Many people in medical school I witnessed sacrificed their health, their relationships, and even their walk with God in their attempt to succeed in medical school. And they felt like the ends justified the means. It's for a season. This is crunch time. Do whatever it takes to succeed. Put things on the back burner, and then when life gets normal again, bring them back out. I remember I was studying in the library early on in my first year, and a classmate of mine who tended to study in the same location one day came up to me, started talking to me, and then he shared with me something very interesting. He said, you know what, John? I decided that I need to stop going to church. And I asked him, well, why? And he said that he was aiming for a very competitive specialty, and everyone else he knew who was aiming for the same specialty studied seven days a week. And he said, John, there is no way I can be competitive for this specialty if I study only six days a week. And so I need to not take that one day off. So I need to skip out on church. And it was as if he was daring me to disagree with him. And so I mumbled something like, well, you know, you have to do what you think is best. But I really thought about that long after his conversation with me ended. And I wondered, is that truly how you should get through medical training? Would God really understand and say, that's right, John, just put that on the shelf for a while and do whatever it takes to get the good grades. You see, friends, if you cut corners on your relationship with God when the going gets tough, 
you will be building for yourself a foundation of faithlessness. You see, if you succeed in med school in this way, you will attribute all success to yourself. And this condition breeds pride. How could it not? Because it will set the precedent for pushing God aside whenever the stakes get high. So as you go through med school, keep in mind that God has for you a parallel curriculum. It's important to pass man's tests, but I submit to you that it's even more important to pass God's tests. After I had this conversation with my classmate, I decided, and, and I saw him, he stayed true to his word, and he studied like, like a mad person, and he f didn't go to church, he stayed late nights, he was putting in the work. But as I saw him studying at the expense of his faith, I decided that I wanted my trajectory to look different. I wanted to maintain my relationship with God, even if it meant that I achieved less. So I decided that I would rather drop out of medical school than to compromise my relationship with him. And my question to you is, are you willing to make that commitment today? Everything here is gearing to a culmination of, you got into medical school. This is going to change your whole life. Your whole career is ahead of you. But is this so precious that you wouldn't put it on the altar for the Lord? That's my question to you tonight. So I decided that I was going to make every study session I had an act of worship to him. I prayed that God would teach me how to study for his glory and not my own. I prayed not for the highest score, but for the right score, for the score that would get me to where he wanted me to go. No more, no less. And you know what, friends? God was faithful. God was faithful. And as a result, rather than getting burned out or disillusioned throughout my medical training, I found med school to be the most faith-affirming time of my life. Because every past exam, every past rotation, was a testimony of his faithfulness to me. When out of my little, I gave him my time and I gave him the first fruits of my day and I said, Lord, I am so busy today, but I still want to give you the best of my time. And I thought to myself, I don't have enough time to study for my exam. I just don't have enough time to cover the material. And I lay that on the altar to the Lord and he comes through for me and I see the results. All the praise goes to him. And with every step of the way, my faith in him grew. And there was no question that this was not in my strength that I was progressing through school. So friends, how you get through medical school really sets the foundation for the rest of your medical journey and your professional life. Because the precedent you set here, you will follow in residency and fellowship training and when you become attending physicians and beyond. The question is, will you build a foundation of faithfulness or faithlessness? Will you go through medical school on your strength or on his strength? So in this way, this is why I'm saying the journey is more important than the destination, because the journey shapes your character. Two people can arrive at the same destination. They can graduate from med school with honors but they can be very different people at the end of that journey. Make sure you journey through medical school in such a way that enables you to remain committed to serving your Lord with your career. So focus on the journey. Point number three, the last point, is define your metrics of success now, before you even begin Define how you're going to define success in medicine. You see, if you don't do this, I guarantee you, the world will do it for you. How will you define success in medical school? Will it be getting the top scores or matching to a competitive residency or specialty? Will it be obtaining recognition through research and awards? Or will it be the calm assurance of knowing that your Father in heaven is pleased with you. How will you define success? Be honest with yourself. For any metric 
that you're tempted to use to define your success, ask yourself, why is this important to me? Will you make decisions based on how it will build your CV or how it will build your character? Do you want to be successful in medicine because you want to bring yourself glory or because you want to serve God with your career? You have to define these things for you ahead of time. Otherwise, you will find that the decisions you make will not be based on any inner calling or principle, but based on what the world tells you you should value. I had a friend in fellowship training who was a very prolific author. He, he was one of the most prolific researchers in our class. And he published on average one paper every other month throughout fellowship training. And so by the end of our three-year fellowship training, he had almost 20 publications that he produced during that time. It was really incredible. And as I talked to him more, the thing that astounded me was I discovered that he hated writing papers. <laughs> he hated research. He couldn't stand it. And this boggled my mind. But he decided to do it and to commit all of his time to this because that was his metric of success. He realized that publications opened doors in academics. It won him recognition and praise. It got his career to where he wanted to go. So that is, that is how he gauged his success in publications. And so that was his value. So he made his decisions based on that. And yet he was miserable doing it. And so he achieved success, but at what cost? So friends, if you let the world define your metrics of success, what you do will be based on whatever bring you recognition, power, or wealth. And ultimately, it will leave you unfulfilled. Now, this doesn't mean that achieving success by heaven standards is at odds with worldly success. Remember that we serve a God of excellence. And when you study and perform for his glory, the world will take notice. Think of the example of Daniel, who stayed true to God, and as a result, he excelled beyond his peers. But remember that Daniel was not pursuing recognition, first and foremost, and that is why God felt that it was safe to entrust him with it. You see, Daniel achieved worldly success as a byproduct of his commitment to serving his God. And my challenge to you tonight, as you start this medical school journey, is make all of your success a byproduct of your passion to serve your Lord. That is the way that you will be distinguished and differentiated from all the other physicians from, who graduate from all the other medical schools. If you graduate from this institution, the thing that sets you apart should be that your success comes on the wings of your desire to please your maker. Amen? Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Do you trust your heavenly Father enough to allow him to add to you what is appropriate? Trust him now. Say, Lord, I will commit my life to you first and foremost, and whatever is right, add back unto me. And see what he does in your life. So in summary, point number one, perform for an audience of one. Point number two, focus on the journey more than the destination. And point number three, define your metrics of success. Because friends, no matter where your medical journey takes you, no matter how long your training, no matter what you accomplish, I pray that the culmination of your life and your career will be to one day hear your heavenly Father say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So congratulations, class of 2026, on reaching this point. May God bless you as you begin your training. Amen.